Clay County, around the Oneida area. This is the most beautiful place in the world when it's some snow. We're out checking one research project that's with a joint project with Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife and the University of Kentucky. We've been trapping white-tailed deer. Pretty sure I blacked out on my first one. First one I ever did. This is our final year of a three-year project where we have two master students looking at adult doe and fawn mortality, just kind of all aspects of does and, and fawns in southeast Kentucky. Can't see if there's anything I in it. I see it. Is there anything in it? Nope. No? Well, how did I have false trigger on this first one? All right, fresh, nothing fresh. They've, I mean, they've been eating the corn out of it every day, every day, every day. We've been pre-baiting this spot for over a month now, and then we set it live last night. So a deer will walk into this trap, and the corn pile is only behind the fishing line, the trigger wire. So when it comes in here to eat some more corn it's been used to eating for a month, well this time hopefully gets a surprise and it sets a trap off and gets caught inside. We put a magnet on an old elk collar so that when this does trip, the deer will be caught in here. The magnet is removed from the elk collar, then turning it on so you don't physically have to put eyes on the trap every day. You can drive around, use your telemetry equipment, and if you hear a signal, you know that it's at least set off like it was this morning. Then we come up and catch it. You know, the purpose of our research, and, and really our job, is to manage the population. Determine why these deer populations in, in Zone 4 counties are not responding to the restrictive doe harvest. What we try to do is strike the balance between what hunters want and what is socially and biologically acceptable in the landscape. All these deer that we're catching and we're collaring them, I mean, it's not, it's not just for show. We're actually every day monitoring these animals and, and trying to figure out where they are, how they're using the land, how many are living from year to year, and what's actually killing them. You don't want to leave stuff hanging down. You want it as open as it is, but it's already unnatural for them to go in. We want to offer as much opportunity to our sportsmen as we can, but yet uh, strike a balance with, with the farmers and the motorists and all that. And all that stuff goes into effect and, and allows you to have a better picture of what's actually going on here in these areas. It's, it's a fair amount. Yeah, you pushed it fairly hard. And that's enough for a Tweety Bird not to set it off. There's a, a whole lot that goes into getting this stuff ready. There's a lot of moving parts, and especially for clover traps, there's a, a lot of uh, anticipation, a lot of build up, a lot of excitement. You never know if a trap is on or off, and you know, we've, we've shown you some techniques that we use to try to help make a better judge, but until you actually lay eyes on those traps, you really never know. So if you can hear that beep, it means that at least we know the trap has been set off. Once you sit there and listen, and you hear it going off and it's hard not to get excited. And then to get up there and see it be empty, it's, it's, it is a disappointment. Now we'll go to Oneida. Hopefully have better luck there. We get to go up that mountain today. Oh yeah? Oh yeah. OBI mountain? That's where the two of them are going off are. But we got a lot more traps to check and that's just how it goes. Ah, it's frustrating. All right, we're gonna go up here. We got a deer in the trap. Does everybody know what we're doing? You're going in. Yeah. Kyle's drugging the door. I'm gonna get the door. A lot of excitement builds, you know, all this anticipation, time, effort. An exciting moment, the anticipation, kind of like, you know, that few minutes before daylight in the middle of the rut, you know. It's gonna happen, it could happen, and you're walking to that trap. Recapture. Recap. That's all right. It's a though. It's fun. All right. Ready? Yeah. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> Bring the legs back. All right, Kyle. Left side here, Kyle. Before we're about to mobilize the animal, just going to give it a half CC. A bam in the right shoulder. Okay. And record the time. I got your time. Yeah. 1157. The important part of you doing this is get in and restrain the animal so it can't flop around and hurt itself or you. It's nice when you straddle them. The interesting part about this animal has just been captured before, so one of my fawns. But it is a female, so it will get a collar and be part of the adult study. 
and as it starts to get loopy you'll notice it'll start to kind of sway that's how you know the drug is taking effect it usually takes about five minutes for them to go down Watch out, I'm just gonna pull her out. So her feet not get caught. Okay. Kyle, just go ahead and restrain her. Let's go ahead and get her sternal. What we're doing now is putting her in her sternal position so that she can breathe well and be safe during the workup. You keep her head up straight so she can belch and regulate that stomach pressure. And what he's doing right now is putting some eye lube on. Uh, they can't blink when they're mobilized. So it's important to get some lube on so their eyes don't dry out. This red thing that he has over here is called a pulse oximeter. It's attached to the tongue and it monitors the animal's oxygen level and her heart rate. We're taking a rectal temperature and we do all this stuff along with the respiratory rate. We have a good idea to judge like how safe she is during the workup procedure. And that's the whole point of all, all this stuff we're doing now. We're just making sure that she's responding favorably to the drugs so that we can take the rest of our data. What Tim here is doing on the data sheet, every few minutes we're gonna go ahead and record all these measurements to make sure that she's doing well. Um, we do this for every about five or so minutes for the entire duration of the workup. So what Ben is doing right now, he just took a hair sample for genetics in the future. Uh, we'll also take a gene punch that you can bank for the similar thing. Typically we would give this animal an ear tag, but because she has been a recapture, we don't need to ear tag her. Where's the car? RKD. One, three, eight, eight, six. An adult ear tag is zero, eight, zero. And uh, it's likely that this fawn was captured this spring during the fawn survival project. You know, we're working in Clay and Leslie counties on this project. Our deer disperse and they go to other different counties as they go old, grow older. Hunters in the counties and the surrounding counties should be a, pay attention to these deer. Um, we're only putting radio collars on females. However, we are collaring, we are tagging our bucks. So any hunter that's in the area, pay attention to these deer and check their ears. Um, if you were to happen to see a deer with a collar, please feel free to shoot that deer if that's something you're willing to harvest. You know, we, we don't want to bias our research. If that's an animal you would harvest, please shoot it if you typically would have just because it has a collar or does not have a collar uh, doesn't influence whether you shoot or not to shoot. So this is a mortality study and we want to make sure that our hunters aren't you know, choosing not to shoot because it's a research animal. What Ben's doing here is he's going to pull blood so we can do a pregnancy check and they can also do a total panel. You can look at uh, things like disease exposure, just another way of monitoring the health of the herd, things like EHD, blue tongue. Now, if she had been an ad, uh, mature doe, uh, we would have put a vaginal implant transmitter in her, because that's likely how this fawn was caught. Uh, we likely caught her mother last winter and put a vaginal implant transmitter in her, uh, so that when this fawn was born, that we were able to walk in and find it. Joe's taking body metrics right now. 32 and 7 eighths. Just to get a feel for, you know, condition. We can look at weight, we can look at chest girth, all the circumferences he's taking is just a better feel for us to determine the overall health of the animal. Hind foot is 17 and 6 eighths. This is a fantastic deer for us to catch because it's a known animal. You know, we caught it as a fawn. It survived from, from birth to now. You know, it, it dropped its fawn collar, and at that point, it kind of left the study. Five and an eighth on the nose. But now it re-enters the study as an adult, so it goes with our complementary project on fawns. Now it moves into our whitetail or our adult project. So, you know, it's, it's good to have an animal that goes from one project to the next. 58 and a half total lengths. Uh, we can be more precise and, and have a better feel for what things are going on in Southeast Kentucky. What I'm putting on now is a VHF, a very high frequency collar. This will allow us to monitor this animal for the next few years so we can know if it's alive or dead. That each one of these collars has a unique frequency that allows us to track this individual animal. We can find out wherever it goes and find out when it dies and where it's at. We like to find out what killed it too. That all goes into the part of the project. It's all used for information to have. This is my absolute favorite. Clover traps can be frustrating, but capturing deer in a clover trap is a lot of fun. I refer to it as a dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good explanation. You know, as, as hunters, you know, when you, you like to hunt, and especially when you're young, you dream about you know, 
touching deer and getting to finally sh shoot one. And I don't know, as a kid growing up, I always wanted to work on deer. And uh, this was exactly what I wanted to do. I'm kind of living the dream. If you're an avid outdoorsman, and you can't ask for a better job than this. This is Hunter's license dollars at work right here. 75. Yep. Minus 10. 65. Well, that's a 65 pound fawn. It's pretty, it's pretty good for a female fawn this time of the year. It's kind of a weird dynamic. We care so much about deer and the, and the resource, but yet we're hunters. But we realize that it's proper management gets us here and that we care about each one, but we're also passionate hunters. And that, it makes us good biologists, but to understand both sides. Gabe's about to do now, he's going to reverse her, reverse the mobilization drug. And usually within about three to five minutes, she'll be up and on her way, uh, none the wiser. Each of these animals will be monitored so that they, you know, so they get up and are safe. Over the course of three years, I think we're at, I think we're at somewhere like 120, 130 adult captures right now. And you're talking in an area of six to eight deer square mile. And then we're at uh, 66 fonts. So we're close to almost 200 animals all together that have been handled in this project. I keep reminding myself, we, we were still trapping and releasing deer down here in 1999. And now we, we have lots of deer and how we're talking about how we are making deer hunting better. And uh, it's pretty exciting to, to see that and be a part of that. Mm -hmm.